Royal Enfield, the oldest production motorcycle in the world. Royal Enfield is the only motorcycle company in the whole world which enjoys the title, the oldest production motorcycle in the world. It is one of the oldest motorcycle brands known to have churned out motorcycles since 1901. Royal Enfield is often compared with its closest competitor, Harley Davidson, which started only a couple years later in 1903. Both Royal Enfield and Harley Davidson have cult-like followings all over the world. There were many production motorcycle companies which have come and gone. The most famous of them was Hildebrand & Wolfmüller from Germany, which became the first production motorcycle in 1894, but the iconic Royal Enfield takes away the prize when it comes to being the only motorcycle brand to be in continuous production ever since its birth. Its oldest model, the Bullet, was first manufactured in 1901, rapidly acquired cult status, and is still to date being produced in state-of-the-art factories in Aragadam, near Chennai, India. Although Royal Enfield is largely considered to be an indigenous Indian product, it was actually founded in the UK by Albert Aidy and Robert Walker Smith. The duo started the Aidy Manufacturing Company with a vision to build motor tricycles or quadricycles. This company, with its humble origins from Redditch, UK, would go on to acquire the Enfield Manufacturing Company. The duo initially starts supplying some precision rifle parts to a company called Royal Small Arms Limited in 1891. They got the idea to add Royal from the company who gave them their first contract, and the Enfield company becomes Royal Enfield. Not only that, since the Royal Small Arms Company manufactured guns, Royal Enfield introduced the slogan, Made Like a Gun. By 1898, Smith goes on to design the first prototype motorized quadricycle. The British still had apprehension about the viability of a motorcycle, and so to quell all doubts about a four-wheeled quadricycle, the Royal Enfield enters a thousand-mile trial, which makes it very popular among the British citizens as a viable transport option. Royal Enfield produces their first ever motorcycle. The 11 horsepower engine is strapped onto the front of the steering head. Not long after, the first redesigned Royal Enfield motorcycle is unveiled to the world, with the engine this time being moved inside the frame, which becomes the standard configuration of the Royal Enfield motorcycles. In 1914, in the advent of the First World War, there were tremendous demands for motorcycles by the British government. The first dual-stroke engine of the Royal Enfield goes into full production to meet the growing demands of the British Army as Great Britain becomes a key player in World War I. The need for heavy motorcycles required to carry personnel and goods resulted in the innovative 770cc 6-horsepower engine, which was the largest motorcycle by Royal Enfield at that time. Their motorcycles quickly became famous for their versatility and dependability in extreme war conditions. In 1915, impressed with the motorcycles of Royal Enfield, the Belgian government and the Russian government ordered 50 Enfield motorcycles. One of the main reasons for its success was the ease with which the Enfield motorcycle could be attached with a gunner or a stretcher, which were very common during that time. After the war ended in 1918, Royal Enfield continues producing motorcycles for civilians, unveiling a sidecar combo and eight horsepower engine, the same combo used by the British Army in World War I, which became an instant hit in the world. In 1932, the world-famous legendary Bullet was born. The iconic bullet was introduced in London with three versions, 250, 350, and 500 cc, which was an immediate hit and quickly became a status symbol among riders of the world. Following the Second World War in 1939, the Royal Enfield goes on to mass produce many powerful motorcycles for the British Army. The most famous and legendary motorcycle ever built during World War II was the Airborne 125cc motorcycle. Since it could be dropped behind enemy lines along with the paratroopers, it was called the Flying Flea. 
the lightweight motorcycle was an immediate hit with the airborne soldiers. Almost 8,000 Royal Denfield's Flying Flea motorcycles were dropped during the massive D-Day operation. The innovation continued with the legendary 500 Twin unveiled by Royal Enfield in 1948. K.R. Sundaram, fascinated by the iconic Royal Enfield 500 Twin motorcycle with swinging arm suspension, decides to import them to India. He launches Madras Motors in 1949 to import the iconic Royal Enfield motorcycles to India. The Indian Army at that time was looking for rugged, versatile, and dependable motorcycles for its police and its army personnel. The Royal Enfield Bullet was the de facto choice for the Indian Army. As fate would have it, the Enfield Bullet in India is largely associated with its masculine sound and leadership qualities. The Indian Army is largely responsible for popularizing the Enfield Bullet among the Indian people. The Indian Army gave an order for 800 units of 350cc Enfield Bullets to Madras Motors in 1952. They arrived next year and proved to be a massive hit among the Indian soldiers for its ease of maintenance and reliability. In 1955, Royal Enfield decided to expand to India. And so, a partnership was formed between Madras Motors and the Royal Enfield Company from Redditch, UK to form Enfield India. The state-of-the-art factory was set up in Madras to commence the journey of the Royal Enfield Motors in India. The first year, 163 Enfield bullets were produced in the Madras factory. What made the bullet world famous was when Johnny Britton won the Scottish Six Days trial for the second consecutive time using the Royal Enfield bullet. Similar success was also seen in the United States where the Royal Enfield 700cc Interceptor won 31 out of 39 races in the Big Bear Run. In 1964, the legendary Continental GT Cafe Racer is launched to great fanfare. In 1967, Royal Enfield shuts down the Redditch factory in UK while the production of the Royal Enfield Interceptors and Bullets go on in full swing in India. In 1970, it was decided to completely shut down the operations of Royal Enfield in the UK. The Interceptors, which were sold in the United States, were marketed as made in India rather than made in UK. The Royal Enfield Company sells off their remaining machinery and shuts down their operations in the United Kingdom. The irony is that in 1977, Enfield India, who manufactures the Royal Enfield motorcycles, begins exporting 350cc Royal Enfield bullets to the UK and Europe, where they quickly develop ardent followers among motorcycling enthusiasts. The sales in Europe grow very rapidly as Enfield Motorcycles develops a cult-like status among the riders. In 1994, Aisha Group, an automotive company in India, goes on to acquire Enfield Motors and re-establishes itself as Royal Enfield Motors. The acquisition of Royal Enfield by Aisha Group inadvertently helped the failing Aisha Group to gain huge market share in the motorcycle arena. In 1997, about 40 Royal Enfield bikes ride from New Delhi to Kardungla, the highest motorable pass, thus marking Royal Enfield Motorcycle as the go-to bikes when it comes to some of the world's most difficult terrain. In 2002, the price per share of Aisha Group was hovering around 94 rupees, which was around $3.4 per share, adjusted for inflation. Today, the Aisha Group's price per share hovers around $300, thanks to the massive success of Royal Enfield Motorcycles. It's an incredible journey of how a former British motorcycle manufacturer, acquired by an Indian automotive company, goes on to have the tag, oldest production motorcycle in the world. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We will be leaving links in the description below. Become our Patreon for behind the scenes updates. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Wish all the hashtags, likes, and tweets will find a way to get lost. Yeah, and when I pull up to the scene, I wonder what the hell is the cost. And yeah. But this
this is different much I deserve to find some self-comfort So find a way to